67.8 pounds. 167.8 for the. Here they are face to face. Four division, five time world champion. Face to face. Are you ready? Now, what exactly is it that allows certain people to have unique abilities to just figure things out and they always find a way to supersede whatever the other guy brings? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Our special conversation will be wrapped around Canelo Alvarez. Now, this segment was already done earlier, but what we want to make sure that all of the audiences are, are understanding is what are these layers that create that unique ability to separate from the rest of the pack a la the guys like muhammad ali and rocky marciano jack johnson there are just several different traits of the dna and that's what we're going to explain to you today on this episode of fight science where we really dive inside of the athlete and break them down from the inside out. Let's get it popping. Take this segment, enjoy it, and make sure you stay around for the rest up to the end of the show because we wanna know exactly who is it that you would like to really find out those little inner core things about. Let's see what it sounds like. Here is the breakdown in the fight science of Canelo Alvarez. Boom. What's up everybody who's watching out there in the world of boxing and those who are abroad. As you see today, we've dedicated and celebrate the great fighter in the current day Canelo Alvarez and this Mexican heritage. As you see, we have the platform all set up. We got to pay homage and we got to show respect. The guys went out there and they performed last night. But before we get going in this thing, we're going to break down several things. And I think you as boxing fans are very appreciative of in-depth breakdown. And when it comes down to it, you like to know. First component is offense. As you see right here, he has impregnable offense. And when you see him, it's obvious that whenever he boxes, that he gets your attention. And what you're looking at here is one of the key components to his offense. It's not just a variation of a jab, but it's a type jab that he's using right here. And what we call this is the bazooka jab. And what that does is it takes your power line in the world of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, this is a very common phrase. So for those in the mixed martial arts world, you'll understand this. The power line is the sturdy, just like if you took a pole and stuck it down from the top of your skull through down to your tailbone, what you'd find is if your body's at a particular angle, legs bent, heel up, stable, nearly a 45 degree angle, you're at your strongest point that's your power line when you hit someone with up with that bazooka jab what happens is it breaks down their power line so even if you're a fighter with great balance what you will find is there are certain type punches that bring a certain type force that will break you down physically and a lot of times you're watching matches, you're not truly understanding that different type jabs are used for different type things. Some are able to bust your nose, creating what we call the blue flash. Others are just to blind you to set up right hands and counters. So understand that Canelo's become a master at throwing, thudding, force type jab, not power jab. That's quick twitch turned over into a punch Whop! that's power so the variation of his offense 
is what we would call for Canelo, that would be considered his carrots inside of his vegetable soup. He has carrots and that kind of sets you up and gives you clarity as to what type offense he has. There's hook off ofs, which is being able to throw hooks off of his jab and uppercuts off of his jab. And he understands how to throw combinations off of no matter what punches lead. He can faint the right hand, come up under and come back over. And then he's wiping your nose with the left hook. That's a serious variation of punches. So his offense is his carrots. So I hope you guys are staying with me. And for those of you who are new, you really like to get clarity on things like this. And this is kind of what we do, you know, not only teach it, but we share and show and bridge the gap. So you're not just watching a fight. So every time you watch a show, no matter how many you watch, your IQ's up 10 points. Let's do it. Next one. What else is in his suit? The next thing that's in his suit is his defense. On down to his defensive moves as we take it back to the fight that he had with Daniel Jacobs. Danny. He showed you an immense formula of defense. And how did he develop the defensive prowess? This defense comes from being in the ring and having experience and realizing that offense, offense is not enough. I constantly render this to the guys and the teachers and the trainers and the coaches in which I am over and guiding so that they understand that three generations of boxing okay so with that foundation you learn through experience and you continue to pass the buck our job here is to pass the buck to you so you you're not watching the fight the same used to watch the fight and when you're doing that you're able to really hone in on what you see you'll start to really it'll start to become clear like water so when you see his defense he's able to pick shots now and pop pop and he's catching joints and catching from here and blocking with elbows catching with forearms here here and his defense and the elusiveness in which he's offering his opponent is second to none and where do you think he got that now he has celery and the next thing that comes with canelo soup is his pace which allows him to dictate how much he wants to output and how much that he can stay in control over what his opponent wants to do it's literally like a form of hypnosis where he comes in stoic and he basically takes the algorithm of his opponent's brain and he just controls it. And Floyd did the same thing. Great fighters can do that. And whenever he started to pummel him, boom, with the jab and walk forward, he was able to utilize different tactics. And I can't wait to, to get around to the other sectors of this. And you guys are really going to take a lot from it. And I appreciate it. And if you liking what you hear, like us, like us, it's going down. For those of you who are watching and you're not sure what we always mean by levels, there are so many different layers to the, the world of boxing. You can take one skill and you can continue, continually over years, weeks and days, months, fold it into another skill set. So you start off with a skill and you're able to develop it in what it, you call you got to first master the technique. All right. And then from the technique, you take it and turn it into a skill, meaning not only am I able to do this now in a slow motion manner. Now, when I'm boxing, I'm using this tactic and that starts to become what you call a skill. From that point, you graduate to skill sets. That means you've taken the liberty to increase the skill to a point where it's a multitude of them in bundle bundles now and when you have those skills and they're bundled 
that's when you can call them skill sets. You've gotten your muscle memory embedded. You've trained all of these muscles and it takes years, not weeks and days and months. You can, you can pretend that you have it, but the thing about it is you will soon have to get a receipt when you step up to that cash register and you lay your stuff down on the counter. The reality is when you're in there against someone real, you will find out if you really, really own that skill set or not. After you learn the skill set, the next thing that follows that is understanding the concepts of putting those together. So now you're in a different point. Levels, levels, levels. And these are the things that Canelo is continually doing. He's taking a technique. He's mastering it. And from that mastering that technique, then he adds skills. And that skill starts to turn to skill sets. And then the skill sets turn to concepts. And then once he's mastered the concept of that, then he starts to add craft on top of that. And his theory. And then now, once he's a complete package, he starts to add wrinkles. And the part of his career that he's at right now, he's adding crazy wrinkles to it. And that's why he's so difficult to deal with. You can look at it from the outside, but whenever you're inside of the ring, you can never get that perspective watching videotape because now he knows you're going to make the same mistake that he made against Floyd, judging what he saw during him and being inside of the ring with another guy. And that's kind of where people can go wrong. So craft and wrinkles don't look like when you first learn in boxing the technique ain't the same it's an entirely different thing it's more of prize fighting tactics not technical boxing so therefore it doesn't look the same it doesn't look right most of the time it looks wrong but that's what i mean when i say it's levels to it so i think that was much more of a insight that will give you something to take away you know and we want to make sure that you have that takeaway that's powerful to have those things and if you ever have those type questions that's why we have this channel so for those of you who never tune into this channel make sure you subscribe if you like to learn some of the more effervescent insight to boxing because we talk it we teach it and we share it with our people so until next time, continue blessings and let us know exactly who is it that you like to find out what makes them so special. And we'll do a special breakdown on fight science. Until next time, so long and be blessed at God's speed. Subscribe, Master Boxing, across the board. <laughs>